I got to stop it there. I was looking for the, 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 the crescendo. I don't know. I was looking for that opportunity, and then it started up again. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? My name is Sean Shapiro. I'm a police officer with the Toronto Police Service, and I talk about traffic safety, traffic law, and police stuff, and thanks to Suno for that intro. Suno's an AI. It's magic. It's what it really is. Uh, <laughs> what? I, I do love it. Uh, today, we are doing what we do every day. We're talking to you about traffic safety, traffic law, and police stuff. If you've got questions, we've got answers. That's how we roll. Yes. Now, I do talk about Vision Zero Enforcement Team. That's going to happen in just a moment. Uh, but I first want to discuss the fact that we are broadcasting in a whole bunch of places. We're on TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Kick, and of course, X, formerly known as Twitter. And uh, they're pretty awesome. Whichever one you're on is right for you. But if you want to get seen, if you want to be seen and, and communicate with us in the easiest way possible, uh, I suggest that TikTok and YouTube might be for you. I, you know, they all work. The only one that works less good is Instagram. That's because everything else works on screen, comes to one single chat box and I can see your questions and answer them. And then there's Instagram. It got to be different, I guess. Anyway, uh, if you can't stay for the whole show, I get it, you got things to do, you're important. But if you ask questions and take off, you may not get to your question. You may not see your question. Why? Because after I post, uh, you post a question and then you leave, uh, I'm still talking about something else. So it takes sometimes 10 or 15 minutes to get to you. So if you can't stick around, you may want to go to trafficcop.ca and send me a DM. Uh, there's actually a form there that you can use. And uh, on, you can also get to all of our other social media there, but you can use the Ask Me a Question form, and I'll get back to you. Uh, I have about 150 pending questions at all times on my TikTok. So it, just letting you know, there's different ways to contact us. And if the show doesn't work for you, you can't stick around. That's an option. There is another option. You can watch this show on replay. So you can ask your question, bow out, and then uh, you can go and synchronize using Apple Podcasts, iHeart Podcasts, Spotify, a whole bunch of different places. You can go synchronize uh, our podcast by becoming a subscriber and then listen to it while you're on the go. That way you're not burning your data and you're not breaking the law because guess what? If you're watching us while you're driving, $615 ticket coming your way with three demerit points and a three-day suspension on conviction. That's not fun, is it? No. We want you to stay out of trouble. We want you to be safe. And that would go against everything we do here uh, on Ask a Traffic Cop. So let's get into Vision Zero Enforcement Team. Uh, I haven't even looked at where they are today. I, I, I'm just, you know, let's find out together. Uh, first off, what is the Vision Enforcement Team? They are a dedicated group of officers who go and try and change driver behavior one ticket at a time. They are not trying to tax the rich. They are not trying to get your hard-earned money. They are trying to get you to change your behavior. And if you'd like to avoid meeting any of them, I avoid avoiding these behaviors. Yes, speeding, aggressive driving, distracted driving, and impaired driving are what they're looking for because those particular activities are the ones that lead to serious injury and death on our roads. Other things can happen, but those we know lead to serious injury and death on our roads, and we want to avoid that. No life is worth losing, and even one is too many. Yeah, it's a whole Vision Zero thing. We understand that minor collisions are going to happen regardless of what we do, but minor collisions aren't the ones leading to serious injury and death. The ones that do, well, they're completely avoidable and totally unacceptable. So don't do it. Today, they're focused on efforts in 31 Division and 33 Division, those are neighborhoods like Black Creek, Humbermead, Glenfield, Downsview, Park Woods, Donalda, Bayview Village, York Mills, you know, neighborhoods where real people live, work, and play and deserve to be safe. It's a thing. <laughs> Let's see who's hanging out in the chat because I see activity. Oh, look at this. Um, I'm just wondering what the what is MTO stands for? Oh, Stephen Bell with a question. Uh, I can answer that even before we get into the hellos. It means Ministry of Transportation. Maybe it means Ministry of Transportation Ontario, or maybe it's just Ministry of Transportation. Here's the deal. Very often we need three-letter acronyms, even though you don't need two letters. Like traffic services, 
two words, should be TS, right? But we're TSV because the computer system, when we I got, got our initials, needed three letters. So TSV is traffic services. Yeah, I know. Confusing. Uh, Tian, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, too. Paul uh, comes in with a good morning, all. Uh, let's see here. Richard comes in and says, good morning. Yet another building got driven into in Thunder Bay and down in Nashville. Morgan Wallen threw a chair off our rooftop bar. Okay, I've not seen the chair off the rooftop bar business, but um, I, I, I used to live on a hill, and I've had two cars drive into my own home. It's not very fun. Uh, this is where drivers should drive appropriately and safely because it's better for everybody. Uh, let's see here. We've got Julie who's in again with a good morning, everyone. Uh, civil servant is watching. We're watching you too. Well, we're not really watching you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dre Studios, what's going on, brother? He says, hey, man, how, you, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be back. I had a little bit of a long weekend. I stayed home uh, yesterday to, uh, to spend time with the, uh, the family. Uh, but it is, uh, it is nice to be back in the studio. Actually, I'd rather be on my couch. What can I, say? I, I can't lie. But uh, good to see you. We'll uh, we'll have to connect soon. Um, yeah, not not only is Dre coming in through Twitch, but he is very involved in the racing community. Okay, Ryle says hot hot. I don't know what that means. Okay, Leland Greg says, what about hood exit exhaust? Is it legal? No, it's not. Is it legal to display vanity flake Euro license plate on my dash? I feel like we've had a conversation about this before, uh, because you can't you can't put the vanity fake plates on the front and back of your vehicle, but displaying something in your window is not regulated. It's not illegal. It's also not a place you can display your real plates, so it won't affect anything other than becoming a projectile and possibly hurting you in the event of a collision. Yes, not necessarily the best thing to do, but yeah, not illegal. Okay. I, I, you know, we got right into business, but I, I will jump ahead from the, a couple of questions that I see here because uh, we have greetings and salutations from Akela Draconis. Oh, still in Mount Zion. Uh, Akela uh, went out there to take pictures of the eclipse, and I'm eager to see what you ended up with. And also feedback as to what the uh, bed and breakfast was like because that was his plan, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, okay, we'll, get him as, we'll, we'll go through them as we get to them. Lucid wants to know, hit in a parking lot and the car flees the scene. Will your insurance grow up if you put a claim in? Insurance basically goes up based on their calculations of risk. So if you are making a claim, yeah, your insurance may very well go up because of it because, well, you used it and they don't like that. Now, if you have somebody else where you were able to pin it on them, and I mean pin it on them legitimately because they're the ones who did it, then they have their insurance goes up instead of yours, I assume. I am not an insurance professional, but uh, that's my understanding. If you have somebody else involved, if you if you cannot put anybody else on it, then you are going to feel the brunt of it. And, and that's where some people decide to pay for things themselves and not create a claim, depending on how serious the collision is. All right, B8.5 S5. I ignored the S, the underscore. I assume it's not relevant, but um, the question is, can I tint my headlights? And the answer is no, it's not legal. You can only project white or yellow slash amber, some people were really digging down. They were drilling down going, you know, amber and yellow are not the same. And you can get a ticket for yellow. I'm like, uh, amber and yellow are kind of shades of the same color. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you tint your headlights, you are, one, not making them as effective as they should be, and two, you're breaking the law. There's a specific charge for that. Are bikes allowed on sidewalks? Well, each jurisdiction is going to have its own law on that, and specifically, specifically Toronto, does not allow anyone under the age, or sorry, over the age of 13 to ride on the sidewalk. So if you're under 14, you can be on the sidewalk. And if you're 14 or over, you cannot. And it makes sense because the sidewalk is for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. Now, if you're on an e-bike, you should know better. And you're absolutely not allowed because not only are they prohibited, you have to be 16 years old to ride one. So there's, there's no place that you should be able to ride one on the sidewalk. And that's good. Now, there are a lot of people breaking that law and it is being enforced, but that's another story. Uh, Stock Ninth Gen says Ministry of Transportation Ontario, MTO, makes a whole lot of sense. And we went there. Okay, uh, let's see here. Is it illegal? To, is it illegal to go 51 in a 50 zone? By letter of law, yes. 50 zones mean you can only go 50, and 51 would be breaking the law. 
Are you going to get pulled over for it? Probably not, because one is negligible. Uh, we've got Jackie with a good morning. Good morning to you. I have a quote from Akela, which we'll leave for later. Or maybe we should do quotes in the beginning. I don't know. Hmm, it's a W.C. Fields quote. We'll come back to it. Uh, Sharif Babak says, good morning. Can a Toronto police officer issue a ticket in Durham region? Do we border directly? Because if we border directly, then the answer is yes. If we're one step away, then the jurisdiction that is uh, in between us, the one that borders us, is what should be writing the ticket. But, um, yeah, Durham borders us, so we can write tickets there. Now, do we make a business out of it? <laughs> I say business. Do we focus our efforts there? No. We are specifically in Toronto doing Toronto stuff. But if we're in Durham, if we're, if we're over in Peel, if we're in uh, York Region, well, if we happen to see something, we're police officers, we have the authority, and we'll absolutely write the ticket. And uh, if we're beyond that, like we're in Timmins doing something, I don't know why we'd be in Timmins, but let's say we're in Timmins. We would have a local police officer write the ticket based on our evidence and our testimony. And then, you know, we get to go to court all together as one big happy family. Uh, let's see here. Dre wants to know if I've got plans to come to the track this year. Yes, I do. I have many plans. Uh, not only to to, uh, to see you guys uh, with Tooth, I, I'm also planning to go see uh, my buddy and his race team. We've got lots of racing stuff. And, of course, it's our intention to be at Honda Indy again. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to spend some time. Now, the one thing that I had hoped to do during the winter break that didn't happen and I think still needs to happen is go-karting. We need to get some professional racers and some police officers on the track to see who's really fast. This has got to happen this year. I mean, it has to happen this summer or, or like right away, like before the summer. But let's hear, do people think they can, they, they're fast? If you think you're fast, would you come out and challenge a cop to a go-kart race? Let me know. Uh, let's see here. What is the minimum requirements for an exhaust system? Well, it has to meet the, the requirements under the, uh, the act, but it has to have a muffler and a resonator, and it can't produce too much noise. And it has to be, we're talking about cat-back systems, but you also have to have your catalytic converters. There are a couple of vehicles uh, that don't have catalytic converters, from what I understand. And uh, if they're approved for sale in this country, that's a different story. We already talked about tinting headlights. Oh, Akela had too many clouds and no pictures. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Okay, questions from Jackie about, did I verify the school bus behind the other one? I thought we dealt with that in the live. I'm, was it you who provided the information? I didn't do much digging afterwards because I thought we sort of covered it, but uh, I'll have to uh, dig further into it after today's show. Can I park my car on my roof unto my house? What? A reminder from Josh, and I appreciate it. Please put the Q in front, a letter Q, uh, in front of your question. Help separate banter from questions. Absolutely. And again, thank you, Josh, for your assistance. Uh, what do we got here? We got, uh, I don't know what Kiko's talking about, but let's move on. Uh, Evandro, our Brazilian fan is watching and uh, coming in from LinkedIn. I think you're the first and only LinkedIn message uh, we've seen today. I'm glad you're here. And I'm looking forward to your upcoming event. More on that later. Uh, what we got here? Am I allowed to change my halogen headlight bulbs to LED? There are ways of doing it properly, but there are also ways to get in trouble. And a lot of the aftermarket stuff is either going to be too bright, not, uh, not, uh, safe because they tend to fail when they're cheap stuff uh there may be good quality systems but there is no law that prevents you from making that change as long as you're meeting with a proper system that meets the requirements and doesn't exceed them and in a bad way like they, they meet the requirements they're safe they're legal they don't produce too much light and they are of the right color most of the systems i've seen aftermarket where they just pop in bulbs tend to produce either the wrong color where it's too blue or way too intense and that could be an issue that results in tickets can a bike be on the highway shoulder? If you mean bicycle, the answer is no. Here's the deal with, with highways. First of all, the term highway refers to all roads in the city, sorry, in the province of Ontario. And really it applies to every other place that, that has roads. Public roads are highways. 
It's the Highway Traffic Act. The expressways, the go-fast roads, those are called controlled access highways. They have regulations, requirements, and so on. And for instance, you can't be on there with less than a 50cc motor. They used to have signs that said that. I don't see them anymore, but uh, the regulations are still there. Pedestrians and cyclists are not permitted there. Uh, Tim Shallow says, good morning, Sean. Welcome back. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the welcome, and I'm glad to be back. Uh, what is this? Oh. I live downtown Toronto. Streets are clogged. Elevator lift up my two-door Scion second floor. Uh, you got an elevator that fits your car in it? Is it like a loft thing? Hmm. I don't, I don't, it's an interesting concept. I like it. I, I always wanted to live in a loft. There was a TV show I watched a number of years ago. I can't remember that. Sentinel, maybe? And he had a, he lived in a converted loft and could drive his vehicles into his unit and I'd be all over that. There's some really cool designs uh, out of the States in Florida where people can bring their luxury luxury vehicles right into their living room, which again, I think is cool. Um, yeah, I need to know more about what we're talking about, Kiko, so I can really understand where you're going. Um, why isn't there more enforcement officers, sorry, specifically traffic enforcement officers, wouldn't the fines cover their wages? We don't actually get income from this, right? This is something that, like parking enforcement gets paid and reimbursed through the city. There's some some supplement uh, supplementing of their salaries where the budget gets replenished by the city, but that's not the case for traffic enforcement. We're not, we're police officers. We're not just traffic cops. And um, yeah, the, the monies from the courts that the courts receive basically go up to the province and some are downloaded back to the city, but yeah, it's not one of those one-on-one -on -one things where we could just write a bunch of tickets. Maybe we need that. But the problem is then there could be an abuse. People already think we do this for money. We issue tickets to change behavior to make roads safer not to take money out of your pockets. And, you know, there could be alternatives, like instead of um, taking fines, maybe people need hard labor, like cleaning the streets. I don't know. What options would be better than taking a fine? If you have an opinion on this, I know, this is not just to here and now. By the way, I love the the uh, McDonald's ashtray in your user icon, but um, <laughs> it brings back memories. But what do you think? Do you think money is the the, the best way to get the message across and teach, teach a lesson. What other options do we have to try and motivate people to follow the laws? Let me know. This is a good discussion. We should do it. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Someone says, leave Alk alone. The funniest thing is that I think Alk was, I don't even know what his actual, I mean, I know that's his username. Um, I thought he was making really funny content. I don't actually follow him, so I don't understand the video. But he makes some really funny stuff. And the video that he made about us was also funny, but I, we're not we're not actually following him, either online or in person that I'm aware of. Okay. If I rear end a car that doesn't have working brake lights, am I still at fault? Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, they may have joint responsibility in terms of not warning you of their being there, but you have headlights and you should have seen them and been able to drive at a speed and pace where you could correct your driving. So. Whether you have all the fault or a portion of the fault, you still have fault. Don't hit things. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let's see here. Linda says, good morning, my hero, and thank you for all your hard work. God bless you all. It's not just me. It's all law enforcement and, uh, and first responders that Linda is thanking, and I appreciate it, and I pass it along whenever I can. Okay. What's the update with hosting Meets and Vaughn? Meets and Vaughn? Um, I don't host anything, so I, I don't know if we were talking about attending events that were there. Like, what are we talking about? Let's talk more about it. With every car maker that shows you going a different speed, how does a person know 100% their speed? Well, you don't really know 100% your speed. I can tell you that the majority of speedometers are actually reporting um, or over-reporting. So when you're doing 100, you're not actually doing 100. So when you're doing 100, you're probably doing 99 or 98. It's not 100% accurate. And that's good. It means you're going slower than you think you are, which is good because then you're not breaking law if you're trying to meet the law on the line. So I have my GPS on and through my phone, through CarPlay, I see what my actual factual road speed is based on GPS. It's more accurate than my speedometer. And since I changed my tires, 
I have a two kilometer variance. My speedometer is now reporting two kilometers faster than I actually am going. So there are apps that you can use to, to figure that out. Can a, pers can a police officer arrest a person who's using a number plate that is not authorized for the vehicle? It's not an arrest, there is a specific charge. Now, if it's criminality, it's, if, it's, if it's stolen plates, well, that yeah, theft and, and possession of stolen uh, items is different than simply using this, something that's not authorized for the vehicle. So I won't say they can't arrest, it just depends on what is you know, revealed in the conversation and investigation. All right. Um, Jacob, I don't know how to answer your question. Are you exempt from regulations when hauling firewood? I'm assuming you're always need to follow regulations that regulate what you're doing. Yeah. Oh. Dre's telling me I should reach out to him. And I will. I like it. It's a good idea. Uh, can you wrap a car in a glow in the dark color? Hmm. A luminescent car? I don't know. Is it an issue that you're, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're technically projecting light. It's an, I don't know. I don't know. But it's an interesting conversation that I want to have with other people and come back to you with an answer. I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for you right now. I could see issues with it, although I think that you'd be very visible. And you're not technically projecting light, even though you are projecting light. It's not bright enough to be considered a projecting headlight. Anyway, interesting conversation. I like these questions. I like questions that are out of the box. You know, this one's out of the planet. It's totally, I've never heard that before. Do they make a wrap that's that's luminescent? That, that, that... Anyway, electroluminescent. That would be interesting. Uh, an illuminated, electrically illuminated, glow in the dark car. I like it. What tint level is ticketable? Yash Dinex wants to know. Uh, and the answer is pretty simple. If uh, your tint is so dark that I can't see you, it's it's not legal. You cannot obscure the interior of your motor vehicle with a color or reflective coating, period. That's HTA Basics, $110 for that. And it, and it deals with the windows directly left and right of the driver and, of course, the windshield. Now, there are other standards. For instance, to be certified in the province of Ontario, you can have nothing on the front windshield and you cannot exceed 30% light blockage on the windows left and right of the driver. If you exceed that or have anything on your windshield, not only is it obscuring the interior, but there's an additional fine for unsafe motor vehicle, which means I take your plates and you have to get certified again. So be careful. And I have a video on TikTok that if you search tint, I've got lots of tint videos actually, but if you search for tint videos under our channel, uh, you will find that I have one with a tint meter, it's a tint meter. And what, you, what, what the average person thinks is too dark is way too dark because according to the tint meter, 30% is pretty light. Check it out. Let me know what you think. What are my thoughts on all of the fatal collisions? We don't call them accidents. They're not accidents. They happen because someone's doing dumb stuff. Uh, caused by drivers of stolen vehicles. Regardless of who and what vehicle they're in, vehicles that or, or collisions that result in fatality are horrible. They're unacceptable. And yeah, I, I mean, I care that they're, that, that stolen vehicles are involved because that shouldn't be happening either. It just makes it twice as bad. But uh, my thoughts are we have to stop it. And we need drivers to get on board with driving lawfully and safely. And the ones that are, you know, driving stolen vehicles, not only should they be held accountable to the, to the fullest extent of the law for the death that they cause, but also for the theft. Yeah, it's just a, it's a whole wackadoo thing. Uh, did you see the eclipse yesterday? Just wondering. I did on TV. I did not go outside at all yesterday. Not not one foot out my door. Um, I did not watch it. Uh, I did not try and see it. I did tune in for five seconds to see what Niagara Falls looked like on television. That was about it. Why does everyone go almost 80 in a 50 zone, yet a cop warned me about going 53? Because 53 is illegal, and he caught you and not the person going 80. And I would ticket I would ticket without hesitation every single car doing 80. I would ticket every car doing 70. I'd stop every car doing 60. I charge people 
on in a, doing 15 over in a 60 all day long. So doing 10 over in a 50 is reasonable to stop and charge, in my opinion. So it depends on the officer you get. It also depends on how much, um, how many resources we have available to allow for speed measurement and enforcement. There are days when we are just so busy that nobody gets stopped for speeding other than by the Vision Zero enforcement team because all of our available resources are busy investigating collisions probably caused by someone speeding. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. John Kearns says, good morning. Toronto cop writing a ticket just over Durham border. What do, oh, what court do you go to? If we're issuing it, you go to a Toronto court. Yeah, it's still a Toronto court. That's one of the reasons why uh, we're gonna send you to a reasonable court location. If it's in Durham, it's still okay to come to Toronto. If you're, uh, you know, next jurisdiction over, it would be considered unreasonable. Oh, Josh, thanks very much. I I appreciate the that you're that you're happy to help, and I totally appreciate it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. Jackie, I got your message. Thank you. And. Nito says, I know you need to run a front plate, but it says nothing about having it in the windshield. Actually, it doesn't say anything about the windshield because it says you have to have it on the front of the vehicle in a conspicuous location. Well, the windshield is not the front of the vehicle. It may be facing the front, but the front of the vehicle is quite clearly the front of the vehicle. The bumper, the grill, once you start making a right angle and moving back on the hood, you're no longer at the front. You're towards the front, but not the front. So the front is the front. There's no other front. So that, that, that's it. <laughs> now, I will say this. For the, all those people who have anxiety or allergies related to pro putting their plate where it's intended to be, um, screwing things into the bumper, whatever the case may be, tow hook adapter. I'll say it again. Tow hook adapter meets the needs. You can have it offset either side of the, the vehicle's front, but it has to be on the front. Windshield, bad. Also, windshield becomes a projectile in the event of a collision. Not the windshield, but the plate inside the windshield. It's the Ontario Shuriken, and it's not good for you to have a sharp piece of metal flying at you at speed or becoming the, the item that is implanted in your forehead on a collision. Just bad. Not, not good. Yeah. Sabir wants to know if they can admit to a crime on live. It's much better if you send me your full name, date of birth, address, and location so we can come and arrest you rather than, than just putting it on the live because just saying it, you know, what does that mean? But if you actually cop to it, we'll send a car and have you picked up for it. Is the police college a hard process? Jacob McNichol wants to know. Uh, you know what? Everyone has a different experience as to how difficult it is. Some people pick up stuff really, really easily, memorize things um, and, and find that part easy. I, I had no difficulty with the academic side. Um, I didn't like running. <laughs> I'm not a runner. Uh, I mean, I, I met the grade. I, I passed the minimum requirements, but it never made me a runner. I'm never going to be a runner. Uh, so everyone has struggles with their own challenges, and some people don't struggle at all, and some people don't pass. So uh, it, it's, it's very individual. It's a very individual experience. Some people don't like eggs. <laughs> For anyone who's been to the police college, you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> Is it an offense to, to uh, paint your bus chrome yellow if it's not being used to transport children or adults who have developmental disabilities? So chrome yellow, that the, the bus color is restricted to only school buses. Uh, I'd have to look at, I've never actually enforced this law. I've never had reason to, but yeah, there, there's a whole thing about what color it can be and, what, and, and how it's regulated. I was gonna look it up, but we know it's not legal. Uh, let's see here. Um, is white underglow legal? Saskatchewan is cracking down on it, but SGI says different. So I don't claim to understand or know uh, Saskatchewan Traffic Act uh, or regulations. Uh, we'd have to look into that. But it is one of those things where if someone's cracking down on it, I bet you it's not legal, uh, just as a, a hint. But, uh, you know, there's no in Ontario, there's no specific law for underglow but it violates or can violate all sorts of other laws. Here's the deal, and it's the one that'll keep you safest. Don't use it on the road, install it, use it at car shows, use it at parking lots, use it 
every time other than whilst driving because there's no benefit to having it. It doesn't make you safer. Uh, and it's it's no longer 1989. So there's really no need to have it. I get it. It looks cool. I, I, I used to sell this stuff uh, back in the, in the, in the day. Um, but it's, it's just not so cool anymore, in my opinion. Thank you for having a question coming in from X. Yes, X is now integrated with us, so you can ask your questions and be in the show. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this username, but the question is, how to identify impairment from marijuana? Impairment is impairment. doesn't matter from how, but we look for impairment. If we believe that uh, it is by way of drugs, well, we start getting you involved with a drug recognition expert. That's a, an, a, or an evaluator. That's an officer who is actually being trained to be able to identify based on how you perform through a battery of tests. They can identify what group of, of drugs you're on. And uh, when they come up with a, a finding, that is equivalent of using a um, roadside or I should say a uh, breathalyzer for alcohol. Now, very often, we'll exclude alcohol from the situation by giving you a, a, a test to ensure that alcohol isn't it, because very often it's a combination. But uh, yeah, now if it's not, yeah, you talked about impairment, but that's a quite a high level. Just having it in your system, we do have a system uh, that uses a buccal swab, basically a Q-tip in your cheek, and there is testing to find marijuana and cocaine. Uh, and based on that, a, a young driver or a learner will receive suspensions based on that. Yeah. Okay. How far away does the automatic license plate reader read? It's Tamara who wants to know. I don't know what the maximum distance is. I do know that they're amazing, like truly amazing. Uh, but I don't know the distance offhand. Sorry, I don't have an answer for you. But uh, it's like four lanes wide, up to 200 kilometers an hour in speed. Like it, it's it's tremendous. And you think about this. If I'm doing 100 in one direction and you're doing 100 in the other direction, very easily uh, speeds at 200 kilometers. Now, I don't know if it's 200 kilometers in the same direction. Um, no, it must be. Anyway, I don't know the math on it because I haven't taken the course on it. But I, I believe the number 200 kilometers an hour was, uh, was thrown out there, and I think that's pretty awesome. What is the regulations on truck lifts and offset tires? Well, assuming you're talking about Toronto, or I should say Ontario, um, offset tires are, are not legal. You can't have things sticking out beyond the fenders. Uh, so don't do that. It, it looks cool but you, you should technically be towing your vehicle if it's not covered. Uh, you get all sorts of tickets. Now, in terms of how high can you go, three inches is always the number that's being thrown around. But uh, at the end of the day, if you have headlights that are beyond a certain number um, that off the ground, you're going to be violating the rules. You can go to the light truck and, uh, and passenger vehicle inspection guide, and that is outlined for you there. Uh, Jamaica Boy wants to know, hi, Sean, can... An air brake license without Z drive a tractor trailer. But Z is the air brake license. Isn't it? I thought that's what the air brake endorsement is. So I'm not picking up what you're putting down. Oh, okay, here we go. Moving along. Jacob keeps asking about the half-load regulations. I'm not familiar with what you're talking about, so I, I can't give you an answer no matter how many times you ask me. Um, Vegas drove his T-Bird into his house? No kidding. Yeah, I think I think I would I wanted to make my motorcycle like a coffee table. I think that'd be cool, but I, but I wouldn't ride it again. Uh, and Akela would like the Bat Cave as parking area in your basement den. I think that'd be awesome too, but I need to figure out where I can place my home so I get the waterfall. Uh, let's see here. All right. Is it legal to have no mirrors on a motorcycle? No, Tomas, it is not legal. Uh, you have to have at least one mirror. We've talked, uh, Val wants to know about uh, legal limit of tint on your windshield, or sorry, on your windows of the car, and the answer is and Josh is throwing it out there, 30% uh, is the light blockage regulation that's outlined in the light truck and passenger vehicle guide. Beyond that, you can't get certified, but that doesn't mean you can't get tickets if you have less than uh, than that. 
uh, if I can't see you inside your vehicle, whether it's because the tint is too strong or the tint that you have in combination with the atmospheric conditions, otherwise known as uh, the lights went out, like it's dark outside. If I can't see in your vehicle and, and I can't see through the window in that condition, you're obscuring the interior of your motor vehicle. So you get a ticket. And I need water. Hey, it's uh, it's quarter to 11. Our show goes to 11. It might go a little long, but uh, generally speaking, it goes to 11. And one of the things I like to do while we're talking about stuff and things is to discuss, well, to discuss employment. Have you ever thought of becoming a member of the Toronto Police Service or any police service? It might be the best job on the planet. Get to help people, drive cool cars, wear this fancy uniform. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it's that you get to help people that, that really makes it worth doing. Now, if you are interested in more information about becoming a member of the service, I want you to check out this webpage. It's the Toronto Police Employment page, tps.ca forward slash careers, where you can get all sorts of information about becoming a member of our service. But beyond policing, there are a lot of different positions. I started as a special constable. I was also an auxiliary officer, which is a volunteer position. If you're looking for an amazing way to serve your community in a volunteer capacity, check out auxiliary officer. Or there are also adult volunteer opportunities that are not vol uh, that are not uniform related. Auxiliary officers, and I'll click on this, do get a uniform. We wear a light shirt and a checkerboard uh, cap, and uh, that identifies us as not uh, you know paid police officers. But it's it's a great way to serve. I I really if if I retire or leave the service as a police officer, I will come back as an auxiliary officer to finish off my time and get my medal. Just saying. Uh, what do we got here? We've got civilian roles. There's also a ton of different jobs that are, well, not uniform police jobs. You can become a manager at talent acquisition because we're looking for one. These are current job postings right now. So if you've got a, you know, a, an, an HR background, maybe this is the job for you. Or maybe you know somebody with a background in HR and they could come in and join our amazing organization. Special constable, oh, that's a new posting. Um, this is a great opportunity. Like I, I started as a court officer, but uh, special constable is is not just courts now. Prisoner transportation, courts, uh, station, uh, you know, booking officers. We even have cars that are marked up as special constable cars, and they assist on uh, at scenes and canvassing. So many different uh, job descriptions that they uh, assist with. Uh, are you a programmer, senior programmer in Java? There's one. Uh, this is a great opportunity for youth. It's the 2024 Youth and Policing Initiative After School Fall Program where you can apply for a job. It's a part-time job, $15 or so an hour at, where you learn more about the police and get involved in uh, in our, um, our, our what we do. And guess what? People transition from Yippie. We've got people who have become police officers later, so it's a great opportunity. Uh, capital Project Senior Analyst, Workplace Investigator, Equity, Inclusion, and Human Rights, an analyst in research and evaluation, communications operator, those are those magical people who answer phone calls uh, from 911, who also dispatch police officers so they can go and help people in different places, uh, and, and they take care of us. They are the unsung heroes of the police service. And then there's developer in the digital team. These are the jobs currently available, and if you look at one, you'll know that uh, they get posted. See, this one was posted. Is that posted today? Yeah, it's posted today. If you click on it, you'll see how much they get paid, what the job offering is, what the responsibilities are. And again, if you're interested in something like this, you should apply because it will not be there forever. When does it posting end? Hang on. Because that's an important thing. See here, must apply by April 22nd. And then it goes away because somebody else will get the job and not you. So don't sleep on this one. Get her done. Get her done. Okay, back to questions. Now that we've talked about other stuff. Are PA systems allowed on civilian cars? Funny, you should talk about that. I have a brand new in the box Radio Shack CB radio with PA that I purchased as they were going out of business, like leaving Canada. I miss Radio Shack. Are you with me? Do you miss Radio Shack too? Should we have like a, like a therapy group about people who like to tinker with technology and miss the fact that that does no longer, that it no longer exists. It's very sad, very sad. In any case, um, it's not illegal to have a PA system. It's illegal to use it inappropriately. So using it for appropriate measures, whether you're on private property or public property, um, if you're using it legally, 
which means you're not interfering and creating unnecessary noise, then it's okay. You can't create siren sounds, you can't do that. So having it mounted is not, a, not as much of an issue as using it, but a siren specifically system, not legal at all. All right, what we got? I'm looking, oh, there we go. How can the car theft stop? Well, there's a couple of things on that. One, when criminals stop stealing stuff, the thefts will stop. When all of the criminals are arrested and prosecuted, possibly they will all stop. When people stop buying stolen vehicles, thus not having the demand for stolen vehicles, then it'll all stop. I mean, that's really when it'll stop. Crime has never just stopped. You have people who are willing to do bad things, taking advantage of good people to, you know, propel their own agenda. They like to make money. And unfortunately, there's money in stolen vehicles. So we can do everything we can to reduce the chances of theft. Do all those things like adding the, um, the, the what's it called, the club, uh, and, a, and a bunch of other options. You can add kill switches to your vehicle. You can add um, the boot. P I, there's people putting the boot on their vehicle, so it's harder to, to steal. Uh, people taking the relays out of their their um, their fuel pumps, all sorts of things, and then there's fancy stuff, which I've seen and heard some really good success stories where people have tried to steal cars, but couldn't. But here's something interesting, and I and I realized this watching a video from uh, Durham Auto House, and that is, I used to have alarms in my cars. Like as a teenager, I had alarms in my cars. All of my cars had a remote control that had a, a motion alarm. If you walk too close to it, it used to, Cobra, stand back. Like, he, he, there were all sorts of cool things. And we stopped doing that because cars started coming with, with uh, dongles to, to lock and unlock and had basic alarm systems. But the fancy alarm systems, no one carries anymore because no one wants to have a separate dongle. I used to have a pager. I had an alarm system that would page me if someone touched my car. We don't do that kind of stuff anymore. And maybe we should. Now, going back to this Durham Auto House uh, this video, they showed a, a video where their clients' vehicles were broken into and the alarm went off and it scared off the, the, the bad guy. Great. They also install all sorts of things that, that interrupt the ability to start the car. Now, I'm talking about them because I know them, not because I'm endorsing them, just because they're creators online. I, I, I can talk about them. Um, there's a lot of companies who install stuff like that. Ways of making your vehicle less attractive to thieves. That's a great way to, to make it more difficult to steal. Yeah, no one wants to get caught, right? They want to take your stuff and leave quietly. And then there's the Faraday pouch because relay theft is a real thing. So Faraday pouch or box or however you go about it to block the signal from your remote. Also check to see if your remote control has an off switch. There are manufacturers that include either a key sequence or a physical switch to disable the battery in your, in your key fob so that it cannot be utilized in, in relay theft. I think that's really smart. The sad thing is none of us read the bloody in, uh, directions, so we don't know if it has it. So go read the directions. And bands, thank you for triggering this conversation because I'm really glad that we talked about this. It's it's good stuff. And uh, oddly enough, nobody asked me about leaving milk and cookies out for car thieves because uh, I guess we have more intelligent people here today. Uh, there's a bunch of people who misunderstood and thought we were telling people to just you know leave the car running so people can steal it. That wasn't the thing. Anyway, I'm, I'm glad we've had this conversation. Uh, what do we have here? What is this? When you put your speed camera in front of your school, then you take them away after a period, it paid for itself. Okay. Uh, speed cameras are run by the city. I, I'm sure they do make money from those uh, when people pay for them. But you know what? At the end of the day, I think they should be on every street everywhere. No one should get away with speeding, not even a little bit. And then people will slow down. If you know, guaranteed, if I told you, guaranteed you were going to get a ticket every single time you went up the speed limit, I bet you dollars to donuts that you would not speed. Doesn't matter how much cash you have, you don't want to give it to somebody else. Okay. Ashton wants to know if I know how new vehicle safeties will work and when will they come into effect. I don't know. I've not heard of anything uh, on this, but if you do have any resources, let me know. I, I've not heard anything. We get memos about changes uh, to law. Um, I've not heard anything about that yet. Can I learn all the rules of the road in the driver's handbook? And if not, where can I learn? Check out the Highway Traffic Act. It's about that thick. No kidding, too. It's, it's huge. 
Um, there's a ton of information, and not all of it is going to be in the rules of the road coverage area or coverage of the book. Um, I try and go through stuff. By all means, go through the HTA. There's a number of books you can you can write. Ones from Jack West, a retired sergeant, um, who he wrote a book on the HTA in in more layman's terms. I think it's like 180 dollars. Lots of fun, but uh, you know you can learn there, and you can ask us questions. Ask questions. We like questions. Jason says hi. Hi, Jason. Avian wants to know, or Avian wants to know, what the fastest car I've caught is. Um, I don't know. I mean, OPP got one at 305 kilometers an hour on the 401. Uh, we get cars. We I, I'm not on the road anymore, but we as the service get cars in the 280s, 270s, like regularly. Uh, 190 on the DVP last year was uh, a car that was was stopped. Oddly enough, the driver had been drinking. Shocking, right? Um, What's the fastest one? I, I don't know. I, I don't really keep score. But it's interesting questions. Cop pulled over on shoulder of an HOV lane. Should I be violating the HOV lane to change? What is this? Cop pulled over on the shoulder of an HOV lane. Should I be violating the HOV lines to change lanes? So you're being pulled over? I have to read this like three times to understand what you're going for. Um, if you're being pulled over, you pull over to the nearest curb or edge of roadway. By law, that's what you do. And it would be unreasonable for you to exit the HOV to go across three other lanes of traffic. It would likely be unsafe. So you pull over to the left lane, to the left curb, if you're in the HOV. Unless we're telling you to do something else, but I, it's highly unlikely. It's unsafe. So in the event of uh, that stop, that's where you... And we're going to block the road to let you back on the road. We're going we're gonna to stick back. We're going to put our lights on. We're going to slow traffic down so you can reenter traffic safely. Uh, Canuck Canoe Catfishing wants to know, are you at TPS Division 1 or 2? We don't have a Division 1 or 2. Uh, we are at Traffic Services, which is the central traffic unit for the City of Toronto. And there are divisions across the city, with, but we're not there. And then there's headquarters. Like, there's, there's tons. Is, was it 15 different divisions plus specialty units? Should tinted windows be illegal? I don't have a problem with tinted windows if it's done lawful, like within the rights and legal uh, or limits uh, and safety. I, I don't have a problem with it at all. Uh, I don't. I, they, they are illegal to be too dark already. So I don't know what you mean by illegal. Do you mean like we shouldn't have any tinted windows? I mean, listen, people get really funny about picking their nose in public, and I get it. They they want a sense of privacy, and there is a legitimate reason to tint when it comes to solar load. You want it to be cooler in your vehicle. So your air conditioning that on your, especially your older cars, may not work as well. Whatever your motivation is. The, the problem is when you're doing it to create a level of anonymity, to be able to pick your nose in private and and and, and um, use your cell phone or all sorts of things. And those are one of the reasons why it's illegal. You, we have to be able to see in, not just for safety, but to be able to see if you're following the laws. If you're preventing us from doing that, you should be stopped immediately and having a conversation about it. Aside from all the other issues. Traffic safety is is the primary reason. You can't see out, you can't see in. It makes it hard for people to communicate. If you vinyl wrap your vehicle, do you have to change it on your ownership? You most certainly do. You have six days to do it. All right. Is it legal to have a cat on the dash laying in the windshield? If you're parked, it doesn't really matter. If you're driving, um, it's not safe. Now, one, they could become involved in blocking your view and you'd be driving with an obstructed view. I, and that's, that's even just being there, I think you're, they're obstructing your view. So I would likely pull you over and charge you. They should be crated or tethered in the passenger, well, preferably in the back seat. Crated being the best, tethered being a second um, you know, option. But uh, in the event of a collision, Fluffy's going to get killed in the front windshield. Pretty, pretty good chance of that. Bad. And become a projectile or become squished with you. It's really not a good thing. Are there still modifications on the G test? I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding it. I don't know if it's still the case. That's a drive test question that I can't help you with. Um, I'd like to see it go back to usual, back to normal. There's no reason to still do it. Are passing lanes technically legal? There's a left lane. Well, really, it's lanes one, two, three, four, five, depending on how many lanes there are. They start from the center, they count up. And there is no passing lane in law. Slower moving traffic should stay to the right. That's what it is. Um, you're not allowed to exceed the posted speed limit to pass. That's not lawful. So what's your question really? 
Can you turn left on a one-way from a one-way on the red? So a left turn on a red, when you're on a one-way road, turning left onto another one-way road, yes, in that one scenario, assuming you are not prohibited by way of a sign and it's safe to do so, and you've come to a complete stop first, then you could make a left. Okay. Oh, one user says, I have tints and it's hard to see. What is the fine for no license driving? So it depends if you're suspended or if you've never been licensed. And not having a license, I believe it's $350. Um, and of course you're not insured. And there's potential criminal charges if you're taking a vehicle without consent. And the person who lets you drive without a license, whether they knew it or not, um, is responsible for letting an unlicensed driver drive. Um, and they can be charged and should be charged. You should know that, that the person that you're lending your vehicle to actually has a license. And there's a website. In fact, if you go to trafficcop.ca, we'll put it on screen, trafficcop.ca, I have links, the useful links at the bottom that allow you to check people's license validity. You punch in the number, you verify some information, and they'll tell you if the license is valid. No privacy issues are released, but this is what, what um, what's it called? Car rental companies use to verify that you're a licensed person. Oh, Jameson Kevin says, as I know, when you move to Alberta, you aren't allowed any tint on your front windshield. You're not allowed any tint on the front windshield in Ontario either, unless your vehicle was manufactured before 2017. So 2016 and older can have a three inch tint strip at the top, but that's it. Can't be in your, in your field of view really. Akela says, it's 1059, stay safe. Remember, don't have a good day, have a great day. And, and thank you, Akela, for reminding me that we're at the end of the show. I, I'm gonna do a couple of quick slides down into uh, the, the messages we have in pending to see if there's anything that really needs um, to be looked at. Anything that can't wait till tomorrow. And this one's just easy. What's the fine for driving with expired temp tags? $110, unless of course your vehicle is not safety, it is not safe for the road. That could be much more serious. Uh, but the temp tag, just having an, an invalid license plate, 110 bucks. Uh, let's see here. Silliest question of the day goes to N1 Kenny. Uh, is it illegal to go 300 on the 401? Yes, it is. Not only is it a violation under the Highway Traffic Act, it's also criminal dangerous driving without question. I would arrest you. Yes, and so would any self-respecting police officer. Uh, so 300 is going to be criminal dangerous driving. You're also going to get stunt driving. So you're going to be seeing a 30-day um, suspension on your license separate from everything else. And you're going to see a 14-day vehicle impound for your vehicle. Um, if you ever get your license back after you're convicted, because if you're convicted of the stunt driving, you'll see a one to three year, year uh, prohibition of your driver's license, a two to $10,000 fine and up to six months in jail. If you do it a second time, the suspension goes from one to three years to three to 10 years. A third time for stunt driving, it's a lifetime ban. And frankly, even the question suggests you maybe should turn in your license. Just saying. Uh, do I need a Canadian license to drive in Canada? If you have a license from somewhere else that we accept, then no, you're a visitor here, you wouldn't have to. If you've moved here and become a resident, then you would need to exchange for a Canadian license. Now we don't have a, a Canada driver's license. We have provincial licenses and every province has their own laws, just like every state has their own state license and their own laws. Where are you coming from? Let me know and maybe I, I might be able to tell you if we honor the license of from from where, from whence you came, from where you come. Yeah, yeah I can't speak to that. Let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. Can I drive a car I'm not insured on, but the owner is? If you're a licensed driver and you're borrowing a car from a licensed person or from a, from a, an insured car from somebody else, with their permission, you can operate their car. In the event that you are living with that person, then the insurance company is gonna want you listed on the policy. Uh, and you can't, like, you're, it's not intended for you to take it all the time. Insurance companies could determine that you are an occasional driver and you should be on the policy. So really, the insurance game is one that is between the person who owns the policy and the person, the company that they're buying it from. They have a contract between them. They need to know what they can do. They might say, 
uh, the insurance company could say, nobody under the age of 25 can borrow this car, use this car, will be insured in this car. And what will happen is if you give it to somebody else and they determine this is a pattern of behavior or it's something they're not going to cover, they'll deny your claim. They have the power to do that, which means your nice new car doesn't get replaced when your friend smacks it up. And also, when your friend does something in your car, your insurance goes up. So why would you loan your car to somebody? Um, not good. You're lending your insurance to That's not a good move. I love that No Name says, why does this guy keep skipping my question? Well, No Name, because you've never asked a question. I've not seen you in here at all. Uh, and if I, if, if I missed you, well, oops, but I don't think I did. Uh, I think I would have noticed you. Now I have to scroll back and just double check. But I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure you were never in there. Uh, but I love how people try and get caught that way. Is it true that people can be charged for stunt driving even not going 50 plus? Why, yes, you can. Uh, 40 plus in a speed area of 80, sorry, below 80 kilometers an hour. So if you do 40 over in a 40, meaning you go 80 in a 40, that's stunt driving. If you perform a jackrabbit start, which is when you proceed before it turns green or just as it turns green, making a left turn in front of oncoming traffic, that's stunt driving. Uh, drifting is stunt driving. Uh, wheelies are stunt driving. Driving with someone in your trunk is stunt driving. There's like 15 different triggers for stunt driving. So they're all stunt driving. Okay. Uh, ba -doo -ba -doo. How can I know if I have any red light violations? Uh, you can get a abstract if it's with a police officer. If it's if it's automated, you can likely contact the city because they manage that. You could also just go to the MTO would have a record of any convictions. Oh, a question of. Umar wants to know, if you wrap a car with the same color as the paint, would you need to change the... No, it's, if you have a white car with a white wrap on it, it's white. No need to change it. Can I submit dash cam video of someone blowing past a school bus with stop signs out? Uh, you can submit it. It might result in the uh, education uh, being you know, delivered by way of a, uh, a letter to the owner, but unless it's caught with the new camera systems that are being deployed to new school buses... Um, then there wouldn't be a ticket that we could write. We'd have to be able to, like, as a police officer seeing it, I need to know the date, time, location, identity of the vehicle, and identity of the driver. But under the new legislation that's being passed, there is a possibility of writing tickets, but it has to be, um, it has to be on, uh, or through a system that is that that is part of the, the network of, yeah, it has to be a charge under the owner responsibility thing. You know, maybe we could do it with with the owner responsibility if we could establish other things. Anyway, interesting stuff. By all means, send video because I'd love to see it. Dre says, was a great show, man. Always enjoy watching. Race you soon. Take care, Dre. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, and yes, we're talking about go-karting. I would love to race you. Got to race you. Can I drive from Windsor, Ontario to Toronto with just a G2? Yes. As long as you are driving and you're insured and all that jazz, G2 allows you to drive anywhere. You can drive into the States. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Jurisdiction of tow. What is this? Fines should be decreased. Um, I disagree. Fines should be increased tremendously. Uh, much higher penalties should be employed. The fact is most people think that half the violations are simply getting away with it based on a subscription model. You know, it's only 110 bucks. I'll just keep doing it. Uh, we need to make things that are so uh, so expensive or that you lose your privileges that people would actually not break the law. If you're breaking the law, it's because you chose to break the law. Very rarely do people break laws unknowingly. Just saying. So as much as I appreciate Ashan for, for suggesting or, or commenting, because I do, this show is all based on you, I disagree with the premise that we should reduce the fines because it just makes them acceptable and Breaking the law isn't acceptable. Uh, let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, just to clarify, because I, I did address it briefly. Uh, Connect Canuck Canoe Catfishing says, why does TPS suggest we make it easier for criminals to steal car keys? We don't. We seriously do not. And this is the misunderstanding. People believe that we are saying, come steal your car. We're not. We're saying that if someone is willing to kick in your door to get your keys, better they get your keys and leave 
than to come up to your bedroom, stick a gun in your face, and make you give them the keys. Do you see the difference? We're talking about harm reduction, not theft reduction at that point. We want to do everything we can to make your vehicle less easy to steal, to make it so they go somewhere else. But at the end of the day, if you're dealing with a criminal who's likely armed and is willing to come into your house in the middle of the night, they are not afraid of you. You're sleeping. Yeah, better to leave the cars at the front, keys at the front door. And it is what we've been telling people for a long, long time. If someone forgets your signature for ownership and sells the vehicle, what can be done? Not a whole lot. Uh, yeah, sign your stuff. It's actually an offense not to sign your ownership. It's not a big offense, but it's an offense. Uh, da, da, da. The person who says we're not catching anybody's car is going 300 kilometers an hour, come on. The OPP caught someone for 305. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do. Uh, there's also some police services with helicopters, but here's the funny thing. Forget about helicopters because we don't have one. You know what the fastest thing is on the road? A police radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People so tough with cars that go quick. It doesn't help you. Roadblocks, they're a thing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, some police services use spike strips. Lots of fun stuff. Uh, da, da, da. Nelly's Firehouse Gaming uh, says, actually, we do have a Canada license, but it's only the military that has it. And you know what? I teach military. I go and do presentations to the Canadian Armed Forces on a regular basis. Thank you to anyone who serves and is watching. Uh, I respect more than you'll ever know the service that you provide. Uh, and yes, they do have an ability to drive military vehicles um, on behalf of the military, even if they don't have a provincial license. They do have to follow all the rules of the province, though. Parker wants to know, or or has this question. If my Ontario license is suspended, can I still register the car in my name and keep it off the road? Yes. Your license and ownership are not related. Okay. We're going to go to, we're going to go on for another 18 minutes. I was going to say goodbye at 11, but you know what? There's good stuff here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Captain Foley. Hello, sir. Good to see you again, too. Uh, what is this? We got, uh, I got, Chris got a ticket for doing 64 and a 50. Unfortunately, my first ever can I contest this decision. So you can fight any ticket you want. Whether you're going to win is entirely dependent on what you provide the court and what the court determines. Are you innocent or you just don't want the ticket? Because this is what where it comes to, if you did the crime, if you broke the law, this is a great opportunity for you to take the loss, change your behavior, and move on. If it's worth it for you to take the day off work and go to court, and dispute it, and do all that, you have the right to. But it's a waste of time, in my opinion. Now, many people will argue and say, well, you might get off the ticket. You might. Yeah. But you could also just take it as a learning experience. That's up to you. I can't give you advice there. I just, I, I resent the... The, the roll of the dice where we pack the courts with people who don't like that they got caught and don't want their insurance to go up, so they dispute all these things, even though they're guilty. If you're not guilty, if you really believe you have a defense, I 100% support you. If you think this cop just had it wrong and it was the car beside you, not you, defend till your heart's content. I support that. But if you know you did it, you did it. What are you defending? That's just me. Okay. Uh, what's this? I think I saw you. The <laughs> Kate, cute youth says, I think I saw you the other day. Aren't you super tall? How tall are you? I am six foot five. Where did you, where did you think you saw me? Uh, but yes, I'm six foot five. So I, I am bigger than your, your average bear. And let's see here. Uh, YTV cast says, see my question. Please. Which question? I see this statement. Uh, okay. Do cars have to stop a bicycle? Do cars have to stop at bicycle crossings without lights posted? Cyclists dismount areas? Um, if it's a crosswalk, if there's a stop sign, if there's a person puts their arm out to say they're crossing, like there's, I, I'm not, I'm not picking up what you're putting down. Um, cars have to stop when they see pedestrians. If a cyclist who dismounts is a pedestrian, um, 
yeah, pedestrians should also make sure the car is stopping before they start crossing. It's it's a it's a it's a you know shared responsibility. Okay. When making a right hand turn, do you have to turn into the far right lane when it ends? Monique, this is a great question. So when you are making a right turn, you have to turn into the rightmost lane. If you were making a right turn from the next lane over, if there were multiple lanes, you would turn to the appropriate lane. If you were to, let's say, go from the right curb lane into the leftmost lane on the street you're turning onto, that would be an improper turn and would be uh, or should result in a $110 fine. Motivation 2024 says, I always, res sorry, I respect the police. They are always respectful. We try. Sometimes respectful communication works and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes we kind of up the ante and it, and it comes off as less respectful, but truly it's, it's trying to make effective communication work. Uh, so we adapt. But yeah, if people are respectful, we, we're generally respectful. It's definitely the goal. Professionalism at all times. All right. Talk about this. Can I drive on the 115 with a G1? I wish I could tell you what a 115 is. Uh, here's the deal. There's uh, You're not allowed to be on roads with speed limits over 80. However, there's a couple of exemptions for roads that enter communities that have no other alternatives. Um, but I don't know where the 115 is because I'm a Toronto kid and I don't. I just don't know. Is having uh, someone in my trunk for a couple of minutes fine? It's done driving. It's against the law and really stupid. Uh, and I say that with love because if you're for, if you get rear-ended, the person in the trunk is sitting in a crumple zone. They will die. Um, are burnout stunt driving? Yes. Although a couple of people say no. Uh, intentional loss of traction? Yeah, it's stunt driving. Any laws to flooring it at the green light? We've had discussions and Sergeant Campbell says, well, depends. And I agree with it depends, but I, I lean towards flooring it could very well be careless, could very well be stunt. Um, yeah, it all depends. But I lean towards yes, and I think the sergeant leans towards no. Because there's nothing that says you can't accelerate to the speed limit quickly, but it depends on what's going on. If there's pedestrians involved, if people are jumping out of the way, if you're changing people's behavior, you're scaring people, I, I think that falls into a different category. What are we seeing here? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, continuing through, looking for something. I think we're going to, to wrap up real soon. What are the laws about driving with a foot cast? There's no driving with a foot cast law. You have to be able to safely operate your motor vehicle. And if that foot cast prevents you from doing that, it's against the law. Because you can't be in a, in a situation where you're knowingly getting into this unsafe inability to drive properly. If, you're, if your cast is on your right foot and you start driving with your left foot and you get into a collision, I, I get... I'm getting the impression that you're going to be responsible for it. Uh, you're going to be held responsible uh, because you're just not creating muscle memory with your left foot driving. It's not a good idea. Do I call the police for ineligible license plate? Do you mean like illegible? Oh, you did say, <laughs> you did write illegible. Um, I'm just not reading illegible. Yeah, you don't call the police for, for illegible license plates, no. Uh, if it's not if it's peeled, that's not a nine one one call. We'll figure it out. We'll catch them. That that's a, a, would be a waste of your of police resources for you to call, tie up a dispatcher when people are calling to actually, to, you know, call for an emergency. Um, talk about this. Nobody ever goes speed limit on the highway. If I go speed limit, I have people tailgate high beam. Well, I go the speed limit everywhere, everywhere. And nobody says tickety-boo to me. And I don't have police on my vehicle. It's just a vehicle. They pass me. I stay to the right because I'm not, you know, I was going to use a lot of different words that I shouldn't use. I'm not a bad person. I stay to the right. I know that people are going to go and do stupid things to pass me on the left. And if I'm in the left, they're going to do stupid things to pass me on the right and cause the roads to be less safe. So I do the speed limit. And I stay to the right. But nobody high beams me. Nobody tailgates me. Very rarely, if anything happens. And you know what? It's on them if they do. 
I don't break the law because someone's a bully. Bullies can go do what bullies do somewhere else. I do a no front plate subscription based. I, oh, good, I caught that. Um, news for you. Yes, it's $110 subscription. People say, I'm you know, just going to keep paying for it. Um, but here's the thing. If I see that you've been convicted or even charged for it a number of times, I'm going to es escalate matters, which means I'm going to give you a summons to court. Mm -hmm. You're now going to have to go in person and explain to the bench why you don't know what the law means. So, yeah, no, bad idea. Uh, I, I, I don't play that game, and most of us understand the game. So we write a more serious piece of paper, and then things change. And we keep writing those. So every single time, you would now get a higher fi a fine and a higher uh, issue in that you have to physically go and attend. Driving a company van with no vehicle permit in it, but it can be produced at a later date. No, you're responsible to drive with the permit in it or a photocopy of the permit. And uh, if you fail to surrender it, it's a $110 fine. And it's no produce it later, get out of jail free. No, you're, you're absolutely responsible for that. Hello, I just got a small e-bike. What are the laws about helmets for very small e-bikes? Helmets are required on all e-bikes. Now, big, small. The fact is, if it's capable of going more than 32 kilometers an hour, it's illegal. It's a motorcycle. Uh, but you do have to have, um, you have to follow the regulations. If you go to www.trafficcop.ca, I've got links to the regulations there. Check them out. Akela says, I might be able to come out for, for, for go-karting. Never done it before. I wonder if I'm any good. You know what? Only one way to find out, and I bet you'd have a great time. Um, I, I love go-karting. It's a lot of fun. Truly. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Tim moved from Ontario to Florida. Somebody breaks into my house, they are gone. That is because Florida which has castle principles, stand your ground laws, you're allowed to have firearms for self-defense. We're not in Florida. So in Florida, that's what you got to do. In Ontario, big trouble. Nelly is on it. Yeah, you might be able to outrun a cop car, but you can't outrun the radio, 100%. Follow up from John. I see lots of people on small jets and e-bike with no helmets. So curious what the actual law is. Law is you got to have the helmet, and the people who are not are eligible. It's fifty or sixty-five dollar ticket. Uh, it's not worth it. And here's the big thing: it's for your protection. So who cares what the law is? Protect the computer. You know, make sure that you, that the minor uh, brain damage that you might cause by becoming involved in a collision, whether it's pedal bike or e-bike, doesn't matter. Protect your head. It's the smart thing to do. Why does it take so long for the police to respond to a home invasion? Um, I don't know how long it takes. I mean, the police was releasing information. We, the police, were releasing that we have an average of 22-minute response time. You know why? Because we're doing other stuff. We're, we're going to other calls. And if we're all busy all the time, we have to wait till one call becomes clear to go to another call. And we have to drive to where you are. So that's why it takes the time. Uh, let's see here. Can I tune my car? As long as you tune it legally, there's things you could tune right out of the law, and then you're not legal anymore. More water needed. Six minutes to go. I'm not following what this person is saying, so we're going to ignore it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. How long is the process for becoming an officer? That is it's roughly six months once you're hired from being trained and going through the process. And it's about six months, and then you're still going to be involved in uh, long-term long -term training. But the whole process takes years because you're going to start off, once you graduate as a fourth-class constable, every year after that you're going to get a third-class, second-class, still your first-class. Um, yeah, and you have some continue, lifelong training, always getting trained. Uh, Umar tried to pay parking ticket online, but the system could not find it. What do I do? 
Uh, it depends on how quickly you got it. It takes a few days for the system to recognize it, uh, but contact the city because ignoring it, well, bad things happen. When turning right, at what point do I go into the bike lane? You don't go into the bike lane unless you're at an intersection where there's a dotted line uh, at, the, at the intersection in the bike lane that's basically saying you can cross into it to pinch the curve. Okay. What is your procedure when deciding to chase someone that is speeding? So there's a difference between chase. When we're choosing to to pull someone over, we activate our lights, we go after them. That's not chasing. That's getting to the point to make sure they understand that we're stopping them. When they fail to stop, when they choose to uh, basically turn a vehicle stop into our pursuit, failing to respond to our uh, command of the lights and sirens to pull over, well, that's a different story. Now, it's a decision as to when we discontinue the pursuit, but the pursuit has happened. That person is now looking at the criminal side of things because it's gone way beyond the simple speeding ticket. Um, but we're always going to look at the safety of the public. So a simple speeding thing um, may turn into a pursuit, and it may not. Can people riding in the bicycle lane for a while to make a right turn? You can't drive in a bicycle turn. You need to, to get into, you, you, you come to a, a slowdown to make the right turn. I'm assuming we're talking about right turns here in your lane and then cross the bicycle lane. You don't drive in a bicycle lane. You never drive in a bicycle lane. Why can I have 50% on my front windows in Manitoba, but it's not allowed anywhere else in Canada? Apparently Manitoba has really bad tin laws or good, depending on your perspective, but don't drive with them here. Cyclists never follow the rules of the road and should be held accountable. Yes, they should. They absolutely should. And they are because they're vehicles under the Highway Traffic Act. And guess what? I've written a whole bunch of tickets to cyclists because I hold them accountable. Uh, I wish we could hold everybody accountable. We just don't have the, the staff to do everything all the time. We can't be everywhere. But I'm while, while, you're not, while the cyclist that breaks the law in front of you gets away with it, somewhere else in the city, a cyclist is getting a ticket. So you can feel good about that. Boomer wants to know if they can drive without insurance, but the car has insurance. In Ontario, cars are insured, not people. They might be on the policy, but the insurance is on the vehicle. Okay, earlier I got a quote from Michaela, who may or may not have already left. Uh, but the, the quote is, horse sense is the thing a horse has which keeps it from betting on people. W.C. Fields. I like it. I, people, I'm not betting on people right now. So horse sense is good, apparently. And a dad joke. I only think I think this is the only dad joke we got. Uh, if you make vlogs, does that make you a vlumper jack? <laughs> I don't know. That one, that, that one didn't hit. Any? any we have, let's see here. No. Let's see. Anybody else with a dad joke? I don't see another dad joke. All right. It has been a slice. We are going to say goodbye, though. Uh, I am back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time, to do it all again. Uh, but for the time being, I got to go because I got things that need to get done. If you're driving, drive safely, drive legally, drive sober. If you're parking that vehicle that you were driving, please dry, uh, park it legally because Aaron gets really upset. <laughs> and uh, But uh, in all seriousness, Parking really messes with a city and people's abilities to get to where they're going. And you don't want it to be you who's in, you know, slowed down. So don't do it to anybody else eats. Uh, I see here Josh says, have a great day. Uh, Villa says, no answer on the electric bike. I talked about electric bikes at length. Go rewind. I don't, I don't know what your, your question was because I talked about legality and helmets and electric bikes. If you've got other questions, bring them back tomorrow when we do this all over again. Uh, let's see here. Anything else? I see Villa's question, but we are already in the circling the drain mode of this show. We're going out. Um, this is the original traffic song, not the rock version. We'll do the rock version tomorrow. We'll change it up. Anyway, stay safe. Smile. Looks good on you. Take care. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely, help the traffic flow. Watch more pedestrians, look out for bikes, and don't drive like a jerk. That no one likes yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely is the way to go. Put down your cell phone, nobody needs you to text and drive on the DVP. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Stop at stop signs.
Whenever I say I'm leaving, I'm never really leaving. Well, mostly never leaving. Uh, I see a question here that's been sitting on uh, Instagram, the one group that can't actually be part of our regular conversation. So I want to address it. They say, hey, I don't know if this question has been asked before, but uh, regarding car seats, what age can a child travel without a booster seat or sit in the front passenger seat? So front passenger seat, you can do at any age. It's not a good idea. We say back seat till 14, uh, but it's not illegal. But when it comes to specifically, when can they sit without a booster seat? According to Ontario law, eight years old, 80 pounds, or four foot nine, whatever happens first, makes it legal. Just doesn't make it a good idea. But if you go to trafficop.ca, we do have information, more in-depth information about that, along with some great tips from uh, SIPSAC. They're a group of uh, uh, professionals. Do I have a link for them? There we go. SIPSAC, cpsac.org. Uh, they have some great tests you can do to see if it's really a safe time to transition your child from a booster seat to simply sitting with a seatbelt because uh, you paid for the seat. It provides safety. Take the seat away. It just makes life easy. It doesn't mean it's safer. Make sure it's safe before you do it. There was one other question that I feel like I neglected my friends there. Um, No, we're not going to get into this one. It's too long an answer. Sorry, guys. All right. Once again, ciao for now.